Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I will be talking a little bit about uh, Wikilove's, uh, a few different Wikilove's competitions, Wikilove's Monuments, Wikilove's Earth, and Wikilove's Africa, and especially what we can learn from them um, in regards of numbers. I'll be throwing some statistics at you, but I'll try to focus on the bigger picture um, and what we can learn from them. Um, first of all, I was just curious, like, who is in the room here? So who has organized a Wikilove's competition uh, in their country? That is actually already like a lot of people. That's really good to know. And who has ever participated in one of them? Has submitted a photo to any of the competitions? Wow, that is lovely to see. Um, so first of all, all the images that you see are winners of a Wiki Loves Competition International. Um, so do look them up if you're interested, if you're curious. The text is sometimes blocking the, the pictures. I'm really sorry for that. Um, but you'll see definitely a lot of pretty pictures and I'll, I'll, I'll throw in the link at the very end. Um, just to give a quick overview of, um, of what the today's session uh, is going to be about, um, first I'll quickly recap what Wikilove's is all about, how it started, um, very big picture because you've al already heard some from Alicia. Um, then um, we'll talk a little bit about like the images we collected, how they're being used, um, and uh, the people that joined through these competitions uh, into our community. Um, so first let's start with a little bit of context. Um, in 2009, which was before Wikilove's Monuments, um, we had Wikilove's Art. It started in the United States, um, in New York, and they, uh, they started, uh, that is why we have Wikilove's, because it was in February, and there was like a nice connection, Wikilove's, uh, Valentine's Day. Um, and they were going to uh, museums, and they were trying to f take as many pictures of objects in the museum as possible. Um, then in the Netherlands, uh, we got feedback from the museums that maybe Wikipedia is running around in the museums to take as many pictures as possible is not the most optimal experience for the museums. Um, so we switched to a more qualitative aspect where we had, which is where the jury started to come in. Um, so in 2009, we did that in the Netherlands with 40 museums. And as you can maybe imagine, that's a lot of work. Signing 40 contracts, 40 partnerships, um, that really required a lot of effort and that just did not scale. We did not want to do that again. So in 2010, we were looking for something a little bit more in the public space, where we could uh, organize something uh, where we did not have to make partnerships. Um, and that is how Wikilove's Monuments came to be. In 2011, that expanded to Europe, uh, and uh, in 2012, worldwide. Uh, and before you know, um, we had a Guinness World Record for the largest photo competition in the world. Um, in 2013, we saw the first spin-off in Ukraine that you heard a lot about Wikilove's Earth. And in 2014, I believe, uh, Wiki Loves Africa started, um, and more and more photo competitions that I'm probably leaving out here. Um, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to focus on these three photo competitions, which are the biggest uh, of, of that set, uh, with spanning the most different countries. Uh, Wiki Loves Monuments has now been organized 13 times, and as you can see, many of the countries in the world, um, the, the darker the shade, the more times they have participated, um, uh, have participated at some point in the competition. Um, and you see that it's, especially in Europe, uh, there has been a lot of participations over the years, but uh, a lot of countries in the world uh, have uh, done it to some extent. Um, and if you look at Wiki Loves Earth, um, I asked the, the creator of the previous picture to also create one for Wikilove's Earth. Um, so this is a new one, and you see uh, there you see a somewhat similar pattern, uh, but uh, definitely different parts of the world being active, which is really nice to see because it, it shows that the organizers of the competition, um, like um, they have different focuses and they, uh, different cultures work better with different topics. So the concept of photo competition is, is, is pretty similar, but um, the way it, it, it's engaged is very different. I won't show a map for Wikilove's Africa because we all know where, where Africa is, and it spans the whole continent. The number of countries that uh, participates every year has changed uh, quite a bit. So green, that is Wikilove's Monuments, orange is Wikilove's Earth. Um, and you see that the number for Wikilove's Earth is definitely still going up last year. Uh, this year, uh, I think it has reached uh, peak height. Um, Wikilove's Monuments is going down a little bit, it's more stabilizing at this point. Um, around somewhere between 35 and 50 countries is, is what we see um, is, is fairly common for this type of competitions, which is actually, that is a lot. That means that you need like 30, at least for Wikilove's Earth and Wikilove's Monuments, you need 35 teams of, that are organizing something in their countries. That's a lot of coordination, that's a lot of collaboration, uh, which is quite exciting all by itself. 
as you can see, we're not only talking about uh, a sing like we're talking about a lot of different competitions, and every team has like their own goals and their own um, their own reasons of why they are uh, organizing it. And this is some of the reasons that we most often hear from in, in surveys, but also in uh, in individual conversations. Um, of course, the images is, is very important, right? Like getting a lot of images from our heritage around the world in all its different shapes and, and types um, is really valuable um, because we can illustrate uh, things uh, in our encyclopedia and Wikidata in different projects, and we can show people what it's all about. But it's not just the, the quantity that matters, but it's also the quality. We want to get like really good pictures for complicated topics, and we can use it then in also in different uh, contexts. Um, but besides the images itself, my personal uh, driving motivation, I mean, it's all about the contributors, the people that we get on board in our projects through the competition. There's are these people that, that never would have considered editing Wikipedia, maybe, um, just because they come on the website. They see this banner, and they think like, hey, that's something I can do. I can take a picture of that building that's around the corner. I can take this picture from my vacation that I upload, that I had taken earlier and upload it to a photo competition. And some of these people stick around. So that is my, my personal motivation. But every team has their own motivations. Um, another uh, topic, that, another reason why people organize it is sometimes because it's, it's, it helps you to do capacity building. Um, it might be uh, you're, you're a new user group, you're a new team somewhere in the world. And you're trying to find out like what is an activity that engages our audience, that engages our country, and how can we uh, organize something that is relatively well structured. Um, and Wikilabs might be a good place to start if that is uh, something that uh, interests your audience. If you have photographers, if you have uh, organizers, that might be a good place to start. And finally, uh, there's improvement of heritage data. We have so much information in our, in our projects, but also Wikidata, for example, we really want to understand like what, what monuments do we even have in our country? What natural heritage do we have? Um, and just collecting, structuring that information might be valuable all by itself. So every country, every national team has their own goals of why they are organizing this. And I think that is good to just recognize um, because everybody, every team is different. I mean, that is, uh, that is amazing. So to look at this from, a, from the perspective of a participant, let, let's take us quickly through a journey of like how someone ends up in Wikilabs. Um, in most of the cases, we see that people, they see a banner on top of the, wiki page, of the Wikipedia, right? They come to the encyclopedia, they look something up that is totally unrelated, and they see this banner and they say, like, submit a photo, participate in Wikilabs monuments, Wikilabs Earth. Um, and, and then they click on that banner. The next thing, they come to a landing page that explains what the competition is about, what they're supposed to photograph, and what they can, what they can win, perhaps. What, is, what, what do you have to do? Then the third thing is they need to, well, I, I skip a step. They first need to figure out what to photograph. That's sometimes a challenge, uh, depending on the country, but um, that's definitely a step. And then they take the photo, they upload the photo, um, they create an account in the process, and then sometimes they come back after that, uh, maybe for the next competition, maybe uh, to just uh, contribute to Wikipedia because they now realize like, hey, I can actually do something that makes this website that I use every single day better. Um, and and they, um, they, they may come back and then we see some kind of retention. Uh, maybe they participate in a different kind of competition because they kind of get that vibe of, oh, that is kind of fun, making a photo where I know that people actually want to have that photo. That is quite a satisfying feeling. Um, so let's talk about that first phase that we have in that process, the banners. Uh, so thanks to the, the research team, uh, I was able to, uh, to look a little bit deeper into this um, in 2021. And we did a, a project where we were looking um, at, at uh, trying to figure out like how do people arrive at these landing pages, how many people do that, and um, how do they then get to the uploading phase. So, so all these different steps, like what happens with these people. There's a lot of caveats in there. There's a research report on Meta. Um, I'm, I'm welcoming you to, uh, to look into that if you're interested in that. But there's a few things that we definitely learned uh, that might be worthwhile mentioning. Um, so first of all, we see about 0.2 to 0.8% of the viewers, of the people that visit Wikipedia, they actually click on the banner. And less than 1% of the people who actually click on the banner typically goes then to actually um, uh, upload something, which is what we consider a success. 
Um, that is act there's actually a big range in there. So there's a, for every country, there's a different uh, number of people that actually come from the landing page to an upload. Um, that can range all the way from 0.08% to 1.7%. Um, so it's really interesting, which tells me that the landing page design really, really matters. That may be obvious sometimes, but it's really important that if you, if you organize a competition like this, you have to talk with some people who are not Wikimedians and just say like, hey, is this a sensible design? How can we improve this? How can we make sure that people know what to do if they arrive at this landing page? Um, we, what we also learn, and again, these are some things that are maybe obvious to, to some of us and not obvious to others. Um, if someone actually visits the landing page, they're more than 25 times more likely to actually uh, visit also the account creation page. So that means that if someone clicks on that banner, they're also much more likely to then also um, create an account um, in, in compared to people who are just visiting Wikipedia itself. If a, if a reader then visits uh, the landing page, they're also much more likely to also visit the upload page, which is good, right? Like if that would be equally likely, then why are we do, even doing the campaign? Um, and finally, if uh, someone actually uh, uh, creates an account through the campaign, they're also much more likely to upload an image than if you create an account not going through that banner. Um, these are just some interesting tidbits. Um, they're not going to change your life, but I think they're really telling us that the campaigns that we are running are actually working to get people on board of our projects. Um, another thing that we looked at uh, carefully is like how many banners do we actually need? Like we talk a lot about diets and things like that. There's a lot more work to be done here to really understand what's going on. But something that we did understand is that um, the number of people that see more than three banners before they arrive for the first time on the landing page, that is about, um, that's about half the visitors. So half the readers um, that are, do arrive on the landing page have seen more than three banners in that same day which tells me that a, three, a diet of three banners in a week is maybe a little bit on the low side, uh, because that means that if you would successfully implement the diet, you lose like half your visitors. Um, secondly, um, the United States introduced a diet in the middle of the campaign, um, which we were actually not aware of until after the fact, and that uh, gave us some kind of an experiment uh, unintentionally. We saw a significant drop in the number of, uh, of visitors, uh, which is not surprising given what I just told you. Um, but we also saw that there's still quite a lot of visitors that actually still had more than 10 banner impressions before they arrived on the landing page. So the diet is not working um, as we would expect it to be. And finally, there's, it is very unclean experiment, so we would have to do a lot of extra research um, if we want to do that properly. So what did we learn? Every step of the pipeline, we lose a lot of people, so try to reduce the number of steps. Um, landing, de design, uh, landing page design really matters a lot. Wikilos Monuments draws in people in higher rates than through natural recruitment, um, if you just come to the website. Um, and showing banners multiple times really does make a difference. Um, it might be a very different behavior than what we see in fundraising, for example. Because in fundraising, if you just click on the banner, you can immediately take action. If you click on a Wikilos Monuments banner, you first have to actually find a photo before you can upload it or, find it, or, or take a photo. So it may take a little bit more effort. And introducing a diet uh, is probably not helpful for recruitment purposes, but there might, of course, be different reasons why you do that. So now the question is, if people actually are recruited this way, like what, what happens with them? Uh, how many people stick around? Um, so I would like to talk to you a little bit uh, with these people, these, uh, these uploaders that never edited before. So first of all, it might be good to just get a little bit of context of like how many uploaders are we talking about? So um, this is the number of uploaders for each competition per year that we see through all the countries combined. Of course, if Ukraine decides not to participate one year, that means a big drop in the number of participants, right? So it really depends on like which countries are participating. But this is just to give you a little bit of context of like how many people are we talking about. We do see a, a significant drop um, after 2020. So something is changing in our ecosystem. And that might be, for example, that we just have more competing banners or it might be something else in our infrastructure. We don't really know, but it's just interesting uh, as an observation. Um, if we look at the number of countries, uh, these are the countries that have uh, generated the most, up the most uploaders over the past years. Um, so that's just interesting to see um, that we really see that India, Germany, Russia, that's the kind of countries um, that generate the most uploaders. Again, not surprising, they also have the most people living there. 
But what is really interesting is also um, the number of images per uploader. So in, uh, we see that in Wikileaks Monuments, there is a very different kind of behavior. The number of images on average per uploader is much higher. That may have something to do with super uploaders. There are some people that upload more than 10,000 pictures per year. It's like, I don't know how they're doing it. It's amazing. Um, but it definitely skews the numbers a little bit. Um, so more research is needed in this. If you're wondering why there's always this gap in 2018 for Wikiloves uh, Africa, by the way, that's because they shifted months from the end of the year to the start of the year. And that is uh, why in 20, uh, so they went from the end of 2016 to the start of 2018. Uh, 17 and, and 19, sorry, yes. Um, so that is uh, an, uh, that's something we would expect. The other thing that is interesting is just a cumulative fraction of uploaders. So if you look at the number of uploads and how many people are part of that, you see that um, there is more people in Wikilove's monuments that upload more images. Um, so there's a lot more people in Wikilove's Earth and Wikilove's Africa that upload a single or two or three images. It's just a different kind of competition. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just uh, adds a little bit of context of what kind of competition we're talking about. Um, so what do the participants upload um, and, how many, uh, and how many of them stick around? Um, for that, I looked at all the images in the images from Wiki Love something category, um, split it up by country, split it out by year, and looked at the people who are in that set and I looked at their first edit. If that edit, that first edit that they ever made on any Wikimedia project was in the same month as the competition, I consider them a new editor. I know it's not a super clean definition, but it's something to work with. That is what we call month zero. And then after, everything after that is month one, month two, etc. So all the months that you see later in the presentation, they're all relative to their first month of participation and their first edit. Now, the first thing that, that uh, might be interesting to look at is like how many are actually new editors. Um, there's a little bit of a bug there. Wikileaks Africa does not have uh, one, 106 percent new editors in uh, 2019. Um, I know what the bug is coming from, but um, just as a background. Um, but we see that actually there is uh, about 60, 70, 80 percent new editors consistently over the years for every single competition. And then you wonder like, ah, but there must be some countries that have a much lower number of new editors, right? Well, it turns out that's not the case. This is every single country activity combination. And you see that actually every single time it's above 60% new editors. And that's really exciting to see that if you use this banner, if you use this, this format, you actually get a lot of new editors every time. So then the question is like, what, what do we see if we look at like how many of these people stick around? So we look at like how many edits they made in the months after, and if they made at least one edit, I consider them to be active. So it's a very low uh, threshold, but it gives you a little bit cleaner numbers than if you use higher uh, thresholds. If you use a higher threshold of five edits, for example, you get similar patterns, um, but it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit more noisy. And what you see is um, 2010 was a very different year than all the other years, um, which makes sense. It was just in the Netherlands. And the first year that you organize one of these things, it looks like uh, the first year is always a little bit different because you're, you're basically taking the low-hanging fruit. You're catching all the people that are super excited about this and that really get engaged and they stick around much more than the people later, in later years. But after that, you see that it kind of stabilizes. The, no the number of people that make at least one edit every month um, is, is actually quite reasonable. It's somewhere around 1%. What we also see is there is a big peak 12 months later. That is not surprising for people who have organized this competition probably, but that is basically the people who return to the next year's competition. So there's actually quite a number of people that return to the next year, which is two, 3% depending on the year, depending on the country. Um, but that's really interesting. A peak that we maybe expected a little less is a peak roughly about eight, nine months later. And that has to do with Wikilove's Earth. So this is the Wikilove's Monuments data. And we see Wikilove's Earth is about eight, nine months later. And you see a little peak there, which is the people that basically cross, they joined through Wikilove's Monuments. And then the next year they joined Wikilove's Earth. Um, so that's really interesting to see. And you see that um, those peaks go down over the years, but people keep coming back uh, year after year. Um, but there's also between the competitions, there's still quite a bit of retention. We see roughly the same patterns in other years. The numbers are a bit lower, the percentages are a little bit lower, but you see roughly the same peaks, the same kind of uh, movements. 
If we look at Wikilove's Africa or Wikilove's Earth, we see similar patterns. Of course, the eight-month peak is now a three-month peak, um, but you see roughly the same patterns. Uh, Wikilove's Africa is much more noisy, and it probably has something to do with the fact that Wikilove's Africa is a bit more spread out over the months. It's a little bit more. Every country is different, uh, and maybe does not have a Wikilove's Earth or Wikilove's Monuments competition. Um, so the peaks are a little bit more noisy. Um, but in both cases, you see that there's actually still a, a, a fair number of retention, but it's, it's different patterns. So if you really want to understand it, we have to dig deeper. I didn't have time to do that, um, but I would really invite the organizers of those uh, competitions to, to do that together. Um, what we see is if we look at multiple months, so we take a 10-month period. So we take, for example, if you have a competition in September, that's month one, a uh, month zero, and then month one is October, and then we look at November all the way through August. That's a 10-month period. And we look at like how many people make at least one edit in one of those months. Um, and then we see that there's about 5.4% in the case of Wikilove's monuments um, that make at least one edit in that 10-month period. So that means that these people at least have their password still. That's a very encouraging thought for me because they can be reactivated. Um, because you get logged out about, after, I think after one month you get logged out. Is that still the case? Someone here must know that. Um, Sorry? One year if you Oh, one year is nowadays. Okay. Um, so it could be, it, so we have to look at after one year. So I'll, I'll try to rerun that at some point. Um, but basically 5.4%, uh, if you look at their whole lifetime, so months two until eternity, so that includes the next edition, then we see it's about 10%, 11% for Wikilove's monuments. Wikilove's Africa um, has about 10%, and for Wikilove's Earth, it's about 7%. Um, of course, these numbers are highly affected by the fact, like, how hard do you make it to join in the first place? If you make it very easy to join, that percentage is going to be lower. If you make it very hard to join, like, you have to do a lot of effort to join for that first time, your, re your retention percentage is going to be through the roof. Um, what is also interesting to see is, like, how many contributions did all these retained users, so we're talking in the case of Wikilove's Monuments, 74,000 new editors joined over the course of these 13 years. Um, that um, like together they made 5.7 million edits after they joined. So in month two and later. In the case of Wikilove's Earth, that is 1.7 million uh, edits or contributions. In the case of Wikilove's Africa, we're still, oh, we're also talking about 138,000 edits. That's a lot of edits um, for, for that number of users. And it's really encouraging because it's not just about the competition itself. After that, you have a lot of um, effect uh, uh, going on. Um, so we also looked at like different countries, and what, what I find most interesting, I mean, you could, you could look at these graphs forever, right? Um, but what I find most interesting is there are some countries that have a much higher retention rate than others, and what I would like to do uh, with those organizers is dive deeper into this, like, why is Germany such a high retention rate? What are they doing differently? Are they making it really hard to join, or are they making it really easy to stay? And I would like to understand that a little bit better. Um, so I think we need to, uh, to talk with uh, countries that, where we see that kind of patterns. In every competition, you see some differences. So, for example, if we look at Wikilove's Earth, we see that, um, for example, Germany and um, Germany and Ukraine are having a particularly high retention rate compared to the other countries. And I think we need to start learning from each other um, a little bit more um, in that context. In Wikilove's Africa, I was mostly surprised by Nigeria that was doing particularly well. You see that it, there's a lot of noise, but there's one country that has a consistently retention rate. Um, and that is Nigeria, um, so that's really exciting. That may have something to do with the fact that they have more activities in that country. It may have to do something that they have a very supportive user group. We don't know. We should dig into that. So some observations from all of that. Uh, from a non-competition month, um, we see roughly 1% retention in the case of Wikilove's monuments. Wikilove's Africa uh, sees also about 1%, and Wikilove's Earth see about, sees about 0.6%. If we look at that 10-month span, we see 5% per, 5 for Wikilove's Monuments, 6% for Africa, and 3.5% for uh, Wikilove's Earth. And if we look at lifetime retention, those percentages are even a bit higher. There's always a retention bump around 12 months, uh, which is um, the, the returning visitors. And we see a, a bump when other competitions are happening. So really try to encourage uh, your participants to participate in the other competitions in your country because it helps them to re-engage. Uh, most of the uh, retention happens on commons. I didn't show you the figures for that, but about 50 to 60% of the off-cycle uh, retention 
happens on commons, but it also means there is, uh, there's actually quite a bit of retention happening outside of commons. So if we want to look at retention numbers, we have to look in the full breadth of our movement. Um, and there's a few uh, smaller countries that have an even higher off-cycle retention rate than Germany. Um, so I wanna, I, we should talk with Austria, we should talk with the Netherlands to see what, th what they have done differently over the years. Um, so finally, it's worthwhile considering contribution across all projects if you want to look into these numbers. Um, there's big differences between countries and how can we leverage this reactivation um, in a better way. So uh, thank you very much for your um, participation. There's a lot of work to be done in this. Um, there's a lot of more data to dig into. And if anyone is interested, um, uh, yeah, uh, hit me afterwards. I think we have about a few minutes for questions, uh, which I would very much invite. Thank you. Sure, please. Yeah, please uh, quickly uh, introduce like your back, like your your name and. Uh, your uh, yeah, hello. I'm Matti. Uh, username is MB1. Uh, I'm mostly active on comments, so this is very relevant for me. Um, about the retention, you said the retention is highest on comments, which is hardly surprising to anyone, I guess. Um, but I would be interested, did you look at uh, the figures of uh, uploads versus other types of edits on comments as well? I, look, so, I looked at the edit table, but every time you make an upload, that also generates an edit, basically. So okay. um, I would also see those. I see okay. them as one package. Yes. Um, but the question would be, is, is editing, which is not uploading on comments, also significantly higher than on, on other wikis in the retention? I, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I have not looked at that separately. Thank you. Yes, if you have questions, please just go to one of the microphones and... Uh... Hello, I'm Irvin from the Philippines and I, I organize different Wikilabs uh, contests. So <clears throat> I just want to share uh, the reason why there are very uh, low retention in the Philippines is that um, w once you create an account <laughs> using your mobile phone, phone you, you automatically get blocked. So that's a, the main uh, reason why uh, there's a low participation in, at least in, in the Philippines. So, and another one is that the um, uh, wiki comments, the, uh, when you upload that, it's not very um, user friendly. There are lots of fields to fill, fill in, so it discourages participants. Thank you. Uh, what, what I would like to say in response is I don't think 1% is low. I think it's actually really good. So if we hit 1% retention consistently over this kind of uh, number of new editors, we're doing actually really well. So, so don't feel like you're doing poorly in that sense. But secondly, these are great thoughts of how we can improve our retention experience. So thank you for sharing those. Uh, hi. So I think there's a question from Aina Lee. High retention in NL. When was the last time they ran a Wiki Loves X? I don't know. Um, I think it's been a few years, um, and uh, it, it may have been a while. Um, I think it may have been three or four years. I could look into the data. Hi, I'm Diego. You saw Poco Poco on Commons. Um, you mentioned that one your, of your main targets is to get quality content. Have you measured quality on the uploads? Is there any metrics about this? Um, so, better so, what, or worse or? so what I wanted to, uh, just to clarify, uh, these, these goals that I listed were goals from the local team. So every local team has their own goals. Um, I have not personally measured the, the quality. Um, that's a great thing to look at, um, but I have not looked into that. Uh, one comment. Um, so I'm uh, George Jiku from, uh, uh, from Moldova, and I organized uh, Wikilove's Earth and Monuments. Um, and uh, um, we saw um, in the graph that uh, um, uh, in the graph with the contributors that the graph was uh, starting to get uh, the number of contributors was lower and lower and lower. Um, in our case, it was because of purely because of saturation. We we just uh, don't have uh, much to uh, to, photo, to take photos of anymore because we already uh, filled up the tables, so to speak. And uh, th it requires a lot more effort uh, uh, at this point to um, to uh, 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 
to make the, uh, uh, the photographers go out in the field again. Thank you. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think we have one time for one more question, and then we have to close up. Mike from New Zealand. We haven't yet uh, done photographed everything in New Zealand yet, so there's still some time. Um, would it be possible to estimate the person hours per retained editor based on the calculating the amount of effort involved in administration and judging comp photos? Uh, divided by the 1% uh, retention and compare that with person hours expended to retain editors and other things like editathons. Um, so the, the data that I found is, is publicly available here on the, on the pause. Uh, sure, I know that, but is there, has, uh, do the projects collect the hours of uh, person hours and of administration time? So I don't have that data. So I, what I can do, I can offer you one piece of that puzzle. I can offer you how many new editors there are. If you then want to know how many uh, hours you need to retain one of these editors, then I would suggest that someone else can maybe provide you those hours and you can match that data together. Okay, um, if there, there is probably more questions. Um, we have a, 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 a session later. There may be, might be some time over there. Um, but for now, I would like to give the floor to the next speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs>